All right, I've finished the uh, initial massing stage, so now I'm going to go about uh, attaching the parts, getting it a little bit more defined so I can start working with it. Uh, like I said before, the hand has uh, been redone, redone a little bit, and I've uh, made a new sketch. I just haven't scanned it in yet, but when it comes time to do the hand, I will get to that. Alright, so for the neck, I'm going to extrude it up. One of the things I like to do is avoid using the cut tool if ever possible, so I'll select two edges, right click, connect, and uh, if you want you can have it uh, to give you multiple connections by changing the option. I only ever really use one. I'm going to extrude this. Go to the left hand view. Now one of the reasons why I always use a image plane, like you see I have set up in here right now, is that I'm having to concentrate so much on getting this mesh flow and getting this thing built the right way that there's no possible way I could concentrate on the gestalt or the whole of the model. Uh, maybe some people can, but I'm just not that talented yet. So if I can establish my options of what it's going, how it's going to work beforehand, then uh, that allows me to just concentrate on getting these things working right. So right now I'm missing uh, the edges that I want to point in the middle of each of these faces. So uh, what I'm going to do connect here. I don't like to use cut is that sometimes what it'll do is create um, one extra vert uh, right almost on the exact same point and if you try and pull if you uh, try and move it uh, one will pull away and it'll, it creates extra faces that are just really not necessary. Delete. Delete isolated vertices, yes. Now that not only did I have to hit the delete key, then I had to confirm that I wanted to delete isolated vertices. Uh, what you can do instead is if there is a single vert inside of the selection that you want, if you delete that, you've already specified you don't want the vert anymore. So it doesn't it doesn't bother to ask you that. And uh, that's a way to get it to speed up. Now if you'll notice right now I'm trying to target weld and it won't it won't let me weld to here, and the reason why is there's still a face right here. Max is pretty particular about how it does its... It doesn't let you have non-manifold geometry. Maya will, which is sometimes a benefit and sometimes a drawback. So now I'm using a target weld to put all these pieces together. Now if you'll notice that I've created one really, really messy neck. So now I'm going to kind of go and clean that up. And uh, now I've kill, essentially killed my jawline, but this will allow me to get some kind of mesh flow going again. Connect, remove, uh, backspace key removes, so you can just uh, hit the, uh, 
you select what you want to take out and hit backspace and uh, that won't delete it but it will remove it which is what I wanted to do in that instance And uh, another thing is a way to navigate between the sub-objects if you don't want to be over here. Um, normally I work in expert mode, which you can access by hitting Control x but uh, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm showing you guys what I'm selecting. But you can actually, in edit poly mode, select the sub-objects using the number keys. One gives you vertices, two gives you edges, three gives you the loops, edge loops, or uh, sorry, open edges, four gives you faces, five gives you elements, six takes you out, one will take you back in. So that's what I use to navigate between them, it saves a lot of time. Alright, now uh, before I pull the ears out, um, they're a little bit small of a detail. I want to go ahead and join the legs to the uh, torso and the arms to the torso. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the legs first. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is try and determine uh, how I want this thing to work. Um, this is a pi uh, tip that I picked up from looking at the way that Bill works. Um, B1LL, he's a poly counter, and that's rather than trying to work with the entirety of the mesh, is to see if you can just get some edges working first. And now what I just did is selected an edge, and uh, holding down the shift key will let you uh, drag it out, extrude it. I wish it worked on faces, but it does not. If you try on faces, it will just duplicate the item out. It works like clone rather than uh, extrude. So uh, what I'm going to try and do now is get my face, these edges lined up the way I want them to work on the major parts first. Oh, one of the reasons I did that, uh, you always kind of want to keep your edges, you want them to be able to define, each vert to define as much as possible. So if there's a way that you can, by rotating an edge, you can define more of an object, then do it, rather than actually cutting something new. This is going to be a little bit of exploration because I've never made a creature quite like this before. Now, uh, one option to make sure that I get these perfectly in line would be to hit F12 and bring up this right click and it will place them in the world center, which is a good idea to do, to make sure I'm in the center from the very beginning. And uh, this doesn't actually look like my cr original crotch line, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and try and get some oblique definition going. Because this is actually the edge that I want to bring down.
having a little bit of trouble there. It uh, doesn't want me to extrude the edge. Come to find out there's still a face down here. So delete that. Now this may seem like it's a bit confusing having these all these open edges that don't really go anywhere. But what it allows you to do is only deal with the portion that you're currently concerned with rather than trying to have too much going on. Another thing is always make sure you're in facets mode. If you're in Maya, display the uh, unsmooth version because you can see what things are doing so much better when you can see the edges. actually be getting a little bit too complex already. Just want to make sure I'm actually able to do what I'm trying to do. some spots to get right. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out. Six to come out. Select both of them. That's kind of like the uh, definition that I want. And uh, every once in a while it's good to kind of back yourself out of looking at your ortho plane so that you can kind of look at the thing uninhibited from both sides. So always remember if you've got if you're going to target weld, target weld the one that's not in the place that you've specified to the one that's where you want it. I mean it, it's you know, it's counterintuitive to take one that's already been hand placed and then weld it to something that hasn't had attention paid to it yet. Now the other thing, the reason why you want to keep quads is right now Max is shading this face as if it was solid, but there's actually going to be a facet break here. So this is when you want to go ahead and divide it up so you can kind of get a feel for what it's doing. Alright, so now it's actually shading correctly. You always want to be able to get the best feel possible for your current model. Same, same thing over here. The other thing is if you already know, for this edge I already know that it's going to be connecting between here. I don't have to really bother about where I line it up. I can just target weld to both the ones that have already been placed. And I don't really have to worry about where I originally pulled it out to. Um, if you're not familiar with how to use the move tools, uh, W is move. E is rotate, R is scale, Q will kind of kill your 
uh, transform for a second in case you want to select, like drag over top of some stuff. So like say I'm in face mode, uh, if I want to drag over stuff, see that's hitting Q lets me do it. If I was in move mode, as soon as I click on one, it starts moving it. So by hitting Q, it lets me drag over my selections. Might be getting a bit too thick here, so I want to check back with my image plane. One cool thing, rather than target welding, if you haven't already placed both of them and you're fairly happy uh, with the placement you did of both of them, where I was arranging the top edge of this, of the leg, and the bottom edge of the torso, and I wasn't quite trying to line them up with anything, as you can select two vertices and then just hit collapse, and they will weld together, and you'll get the average where they were. Now some people will just use weld and crank it way up, but I like using weld to only uh, to only give me the ones I haven't, or that are almost right on top of each other. So this is giving me a good average. Uh, select open edge, right click, cap. Now in order to do this weld, I'm going to have to kind of divide this one up. This needs more divisions anyway. Alright, I can either control click on multiple ones, or I can hit ring, and it'll try and get me all the way up. Connect. And I know that all of these are going to come out at least a little bit, so I'll just do a generic one right at first. This will help me define the small of the back. try and see if I can get a little bit of a mesh flow going so I don't have as many triangles. I like to kind of worry about that after the fact. If I get too caught up with trying to make everything a quad when I'm first constructing stuff, I'll, I'll lose, sometimes I'll lose the sense of the actual object. I'm so wrapped up in making this thing all made out of quads, the ever important quads. So this gives me a fairly good sense of how this is going to work. Some of these things, I just kind of know how the back works and the musculature, so I'm already kind of confident on how I'm going to arrange the stuff. I don't have to have the orthos up the entire time. Take a look at it from far away. Okay, it's kind of got that feel that I was going for. Right now I want to make sure the legs get to deform.
right, right now I can see that uh, I'm going to need an extra division in here. This is one of the parts that I always struggle with, getting the best possible mesh flow. Sometimes I'll do things that are kind of redundant. want to do if I start to see an area that might be considered a little bit dense is to back off and check the poly count. I'm using a Martinez's uh, poly count tool and it gives you a correct triangle count even in uh, edit poly mode which the built-in max one does not. So right now I'm at 806 polys. My goal for this is 200 so I'm getting a little ahead of myself. off a little bit on putting in too many details. But one thing I do know from animating things before is I definitely need another break. One edge will stay in the center no matter what. One edge will pretty much go with the leg, and the third one will hover between the two. get in this if possible and because it doesn't really do too much on the front I'm probably going to make it weld in right there
I gotta figure out how I want to arrange these verts for the best possible animation. And it is going to be difficult. Because there's a lot of movement that's going to go on in these legs. One thing that you can remember when you're using connect is that if there's already a line connecting them, it won't try and go through there. Uh, so if you check both of these and hit connect, they're already connected, so it's not going to do anything. So you can uh, use that to your advantage. Just because these things line up on the side does not mean that this thing looks right. So what I need to make sure is in this three quarters view is is this thing, you know, is it is it doing what it's supposed to do? That's one of the big mistakes that a lot of people will make is they'll assume because they're uh, object is lining up with our orthographic views that they're all all straight it just doesn't work that way all right so I need to remember that when this leg straightens uh, the other reason the reason why it's modeled like this and not with the legs straight out is because this is going to be the default pose where he's standing around. I could have modeled them straight out, but then there might be some weirdness when it goes to uh, to deform, uh, or when it goes back down to this size. So what you want to think about, especially in a low poly model, is what position is it going to be in the most? And uh, by doing that, you can ensure that it will look good. And that's, that's the whole thing we're, we're all obsessed with, right? Is making sure you've got, the, got it looking good. And if the character, or if the person watching is going to see it in uh, one you know, pose, the majority of the game, there's no reason to uh, model it in a different way. Because this, this is the pose that's going to get the most attention. When you go to rig this thing, you're not going to put as much effort there into every little nuance of how it, how the stuff goes. This will help me define the sartorius by connecting this. And I'm actually to really bring it out. By moving this so far forward, it's no longer really lining up to do its old job. So I need to put the new one in where it used to be.
check my poly count again. 862. Still doing pretty good. Alright, so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a fairly decent uh, deformation here. There's this edge, or this uh, loop that will keep the lower legs definition. There's this loop to this loop that will keep the upper legs. Um, what then remains is this edge and these to help provide the mass when it bends. Now I don't have any real definition up here, but I do have it back here. defining my ankle wheel. It's a tough call, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put a division around here. Because it's just going to look really jagged if I don't. But I'll reserve the right to take that out. Alright, so that. That's how I connected the legs to the body, get some muscle definition, try and plan for animation purposes. F4 will show your wireframe on and off, F3 will take you to a wireframe only view, and what's really nice is if you're already in faceted view, hitting F3 again will take you into smooth view. So let me go ahead. Smooth all this out. All right. There we go. So, if you want to get a quick look at what your item looks like in smooth, rather than having to go up here and say smooth, you can just tap F3 twice. Now, if uh, the seam running down the middle bothers you, you can delete one half, put on a Symmetry modifier. There we go. J 
check it out. And uh, I can already see that I don't like the way this is working. Kill that instance. The reason why instance is nice is because I can work on either side. I like that a lot. how you attach the legs. Uh, 